kid what they want to be when they grow up, what's usually the answer? Maybe you think it'd be something like a doctor, or a firefighter, or a police officer. But a common one I've heard is video game designer. If you ask my little brother, that's what he'd say he wants to do when he grows up. And that's probably what I would have said when I was his age, too. But coding, the skill needed for this profession, is only taught in 25% of schools. Do you know what coding is? Since it's often a subject of confusion, coding, aka programming, means inputting technology to direct it to do something, like instructions. I've met many kids, teenagers, and even adults who don't even know the most basic ideas of coding. For example, I once had a friend who thought there was only two coding languages, when, in reality, there are hundreds. Many things we consume every single day have people with coding behind them. Things like Facebook, Twitter, Google, vi TV, video games. It all started for me about two and a half years ago when I just turned 10 years old. My parents had bought me a laptop and two coding books for Christmas and, while I didn't really end up using the books themselves, the websites the books were based off of helped me a lot. The first language I learned was Scratch created by a group of computer programmers out of MIT. It's a program mostly for kids, but really, it's accessible for all ages. It utilizes a simple drag and drop platform of colorful blocks that can attach together to make a project. And projects can be anywhere from games to stories to animations. I also had the incredible opportunity to go to MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to learn another coding language called Python. Not every kid is going to get these opportunities, though. However, I believe all kids should have access to learn to code, just like all kids should have access to books to read. Many kids aren't going to be able to go to camps or own laptops. Coding shouldn't be a privilege. Everyone should have access to it, regardless of race, gender, or class. By not teaching coding in schools, the kids that can get those skills are gaining advantages over the kids who just can't, and that's not fair. Teaching coding in schools is an uncharted territory, either. Countries like England, Australia, Holland, some cities and states in the United States, and even Canadian provinces like British Columbia and Nova Scotia are already starting to implement these changes. And more are definitely to come. Even Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, recently spoke out in favor of coding. Another important point is the engagement of students. Currently, I'm volunteering once a week to teach a group of grade threes how to code using Scratch. They've had a couple classes so far, and they're really getting used to the language. They're fascinated how they're able to do even simple things, like making the Scratch cat, the mascot of the website, move up and down. But here in Newfoundland and Labdoor, there are only two computer coding courses in the curriculum. They are elective courses taught in high school and are very difficult to build off of. Since coding is an essential new literacy, shouldn't it be taught much earlier than late high school? After all, how would we feel if we had to wait till late high school to learn how to do things like read or write or do math? It's not fair that only these kids in this grade three class are getting proper coding education. Coding doesn't only help in technology-based subjects either. For example, when I first started coding with Scratch, I didn't know X and Y positioning yet a vital part of the language. So I asked my parents how to do it, and they showed me. And when we did it in school, I was the only kid who knew it all already. But even if these kids don't pursue a career in technology, I believe they're learning a skill that has many benefits. Who knows, maybe they will become a programmer one day. Maybe even the next big programmer, like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. Coding also makes important contributions to the economy. Here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we are a resource-based economy that, historically, is focused on renewable resources, like fish and forestry, and non-renewable resources, like oils, minerals, and natural gases. The two main problems with these resources is that, one, they can get overused and industries can collapse. For example, the Cobb moratorium of the 1990s and current concerns with the shrimp fishery, and two, unstable prices associated with markets, such as oil and natural gas, an issue that's still happening. Computer science-related industry, on the other hand, is such a bountiful and rapidly growing resource that it's only becoming more important. In fact, by 2019, Canada will have 182,000 open IT jobs. And that's only IT. But without the proper skills to fulfill these jobs, people just won't be able to do them. 
And isn't that the main purpose of schools? To teach us skills, to help us get employment? Since it's widely predicted that jobs will become more and more computer science related, wouldn't teaching us code be vital? <coughs> Coding has very many outside of school benefits as well. This can include the development of problem solving and critical thinking skills, which we all need to learn better. Also, our self-confidence is boosted when we learn a new skill, especially one like coding that has so many uses and opportunities that come with it. Also, when you code, you will make mistakes, as I can tell you from experience. Sometimes you'll have to search through all your lines of code just to find one spot that's causing all of it to malfunction. You could say it also helps develop patience. Coding can have an important impact in terms of jobs, skills, or just a fun hobby that's engaging to learn. And everyone deserves to learn it. So what are you waiting for? Try coding out, learn more about how it works, or even challenge schools on whether they should be teaching code. And with technology advancing so quickly, I promise it won't be a waste of your time. <laughs>